Hey Dollaholics! Do y'all ever load your save searches on eBay and see a doll that is so perfect for your collection that you start plotting ways of distracting the entire doll community so nobody else sees it? You know, just to throw them off the scent a little bit. No? Just me? Well, just weeks after selling my entire American Girl of Today collection and telling the entire internet that I'm no longer going to be collecting or showing interest in this doll line, this little <laughs> roped me right back in. That's right, a number 15 that doesn't look like a total tragedy. Okay, so not all number 15 dolls look like total swamp sludge, but they were made with that early Kanekalon hair, and the textured ones tend to break off really easily, so a lot of them have really thin hair with jagged edges. I do think number 15 became slightly more popular after Mattel took over the brand, so it is really hard to find a first edition number 15, and I think mine is mint condition. I hope. I haven't gotten a really great look at her because there were only like two photos on the eBay listing, so let's hope I got a good one. Because let me tell you, I way overpaid for this doll. Okay, so anyway, I'm actually dying to get her out of the box and figure out if this was the worst mistake of my life. So let's open her up. So if you're a member of my Patreon community, you've actually heard me talk about this doll already because I mentioned her in my first episode of Doll Diaries, which is an exclusive on my Patreon account. It's basically 30 minutes to an hour long episodes that I do each week talking about drama in the doll community, some of the random things I picked up here and there, and just anything that kind of comes to my mind. It's sort of like a stream of consciousness, consciousness. It's sort of a stream of conscious kind of thing. And it's really fun to just sit down and relax and talk to my doll friends about dolls. So if you're interested in it, it's only $3 a month to join my Patreon community and you can find it at patreon.com slash idreamofjohnny. It's a great way to support my channel so that I can continue making doll videos for people on the internet. So I feel like I owe you a quick anecdote about this doll because I think it's a little bit interesting if you're somebody that likes to bid on eBay auctions because when I saw this doll, I fell in love with her immediately, and I knew that if I didn't get her, that I might actually regret it if I ever decided to collect the American Girl of Today line again. And it's, she's just the most beautiful one I've ever seen, like at least in pictures. So I was like, okay, I think I really, really need to get this doll. And I started psyching myself up like, every single day that this auction was up, like from day one. So, you know, as the days go by, you start seeing that number of watchers on the listing go up and up and up. And there were almost like 40 people watching this auction. And I thought, oh no, this doll is gonna cost me a freaking fortune. <laughs> so every day that went by, I started saying like, okay, maybe I'll maybe I'll pay $200. And then the number of watchers went up. I was like, okay, maybe 250. And then the bids started going up. And then by the it, basically by the sixth or seventh day of the auction, I was like, all right, I'm gonna have to go for broke on this because I actually might lose this auction based on the way things are going. So I guess I lost my entire mind. And so I always bid at the last minute just because that's, I think, the best way to win an auction. And so this doll typically is really, I think, only worth about $150 to $200, just in okay condition and not a first edition. So I would say on average, you know, these, you know, you really probably don't want to spend more than $250 on a number of 15, but I got so amped for this auction that my final bid price was over $600. <laughs> yes, I know that's embarrassing, and you can really get in trouble doing that because Sometimes it happens where you think, I'm just going to bid a stupid amount so that I'm sure that I win this thing, and then somebody else does it, and you end up way overpaying for something. And in my case, I did overpay a little bit, and luckily, the second highest bidder, I think, bid only like a little over $300, so I guess that's not a terrible price. We're about to find out, and I think I'm like all of y'all too much so I probably need to go ahead and get her out of the box but just so you know this doll I was willing to pay $600 for. All right let's get this out of the box. So anyway we're not off to a really great start because the sticker for her box has been taken off. The one that shows the product code and tells you what number the doll is and the sucky thing is is I actually emailed the seller to ask about it specifically because it wasn't shown in the photo and they never responded to me. So I assume that was because they were just busy and a lot of times when you sell on eBay, you don't always see messages that come through. So I just kind of thought, okay, they just didn't see it. Surely it's fine. Cause you look like, I looked at their other listings and it's not like an American girl reseller. In fact, I believe this was the only American girl item they were even selling. So I'm pretty confident that this is her box lid, but I am disappointed that the sticker was pulled off, especially cause I asked specifically about it and paid way too much for her. But anyway, moment of truth, let's take the box lid off. 
This doll actually feels heavy. I don't know if there's something else in here or not, but we're about to find out. Okay, I think she might actually be in pretty mint condition. So let me have a quick look at her face. Normally I show y'all first. Okay, I'll let you see first since we're friends. So this is her, my number 15. And like I said before, she's really the only one that's ever inspired me to buy one. So do we love her? Yes, we love her. Oh my gosh. Okay, no regrets. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take her out of the box. I don't think she's strapped in. Yes, and she has the original factory braid. I am so excited now because I wasn't totally sure that she was gonna have her factory braid because the photos for this were actually quite terrible. And I had to use like my spidey senses to know like, you know, you just have to like take little context clues from pictures and stuff and see like, okay, is she gonna have her factory hair? Does she have silver eyes? So I had to be really good and like study the auction photos. So. Oh my gosh, this is the most stunning number 15 I have ever seen in my entire freaking life. And she has her factory hair set, which is so, so incredible. And she has her original hand tags that have like her hair care and the grin pins. And I think they've swapped her shoes out weirdly. So again, a little bit alarming, but looking at this doll, this is like a factory fresh doll. So I'm not worried. I think they changed her shoes, but the good thing is, is they included her original shoes in this pack. Unless for some reason, American Girl double shipped these. They did some weird things in the 90s. So it's, entirely possible that this doll came with both shoes because I feel like I have seen first edition girls of today with like basically Molly and Samantha's shoes on so if you know let me know in the comments. Hi it's me from the future. After thinking about this for a while I actually think these dolls might have actually shipped with Molly and Samantha's meat shoes in some rare instances when they actually had a shortage of the original shoes. It was actually common for Pleasant Company to ship replacement items and then follow up later on weeks later once they got the item in stock and just send a replacement to the owner. So my guess is this doll actually shipped in these shoes and they got the velvet shoes later okay anyway back to the show um especially because this rubber band here actually i think this might be the rubber band that went around her neck to strap her in the package which is really great and it hasn't disintegrated which is awesome because that means also her hair tie is still intact okay so this doll was stored in somewhere that was climate controlled because the rubber band in her hair actually is still intact it hasn't disintegrated which is so incredibly rare for an American Girl doll. Most of these dolls from the 80s and 90s that had any sort of like rubber band in their hair, like Molly and Kirsten's braids, for instance, those usually crumble and dry out over the years and they just kind of break off and you have to replace them. But this is the original black rubber band that went in her hair. And again, this is her original factory set here with a braid. I am so, so glad I won this auction. I mean, one of the reasons I fell in love with her was the, um, like her eyelashes were really curly and you can kind of tell um, that her eyelashes flip up a little bit. And that's very rare for these early girls of today as well. Um, you see that typically more in some of the earlier dolls like Kirsten and Molly. You can find them where they have, like their eyelashes are so curly, it makes their eyes kind of bulge out a little bit where they're sort of like glaring. And I personally really love that look. It makes them look vintage and like a little bit weird to me. So I always seek that quality out in an American Girl doll. So again, I haven't seen a doll with this kind of quality to her before, like the eyes and everything. So, or like a number 15, I mean, I'm so excited, like I'm tripping over my words, but this is truly the most beautiful number 15 I've ever seen. And as I'm like waving her around in the lights, I can see she has a shine mark on her cheek. Let's see if I can show you here. It's right here. I don't know if you can see that in the light. Again, that probably came from storage and I'm not really that pressed about it. I can get this off. And in fact, you can just use a dry magic eraser and just rub the spot continuously until it basically buffs out the shine mark. And it shouldn't affect any face paint that's on here. Although these girls of today, like the first editions, didn't have a ton of face paint on them. So they, they were very like, quote unquote, natural. So they didn't look like they were made up or anything. So yeah, we've just got a little shine mark there and on her nose. And it looks like she might have the beginnings of bubble eye, which I really don't care about because it's very subtle. And I don't even know if you can see it. It's in her right eye right here. If you hit the light just so, you can kind of see that there's like a tiny little bit of space between the paint 
in her pupil, but that's not something that I'm gonna fix. Like, I generally will fix bubble eye on lighter eyed dolls because it's generally a little bit more obvious, but dolls that have like deeper colored eyes like this one, you generally can't tell unless you shine a light on it. So she'll look perfect on display. So I have no interest in trying to fix that because again, I'm pretty sure this doll is, basically has been untouched. She's got her original underwear on and her body, like I can just tell by holding this because I have had hundreds of, of America, <laughs> hundreds of American Girl dolls in my possession before. And I know what it feels like to have one that's basically factory fresh and unplayed with, untouched. I, I don't think she's ever been undressed. So we are gonna leave her clothes on. A again, she is in spectacular shape. Just a quick hit with a magic eraser and she's gonna look mint condition. I am so, so happy. As you can tell, I'm like just a big, big fan of getting a doll that is, like I said, brand new, first edition, mint condition. And it's this just feels like a, ple a piece of Pleasant Company history. And oh, she is just gonna look so good in my collection. And I kind of feel like I'm uh, hooked again. So I might be getting a few more American Girl of Today dolls. I decided to keep my number four and my number 18 because I have a first edition number 18 as well, which is incredibly hard to find. So I basically decided with my American Girl of Today collection, as far as the dolls go, I think I'm gonna only do the dolls that basically aren't white because I collect mostly 1980s Pleasant Company and all of those dolls are light skinned and so, by that nature, my doll collection isn't super diverse. So I thought it would be like a really good opportunity to add some diversity into my collection by getting some dolls that have some deeper skin tones. So I really feel like that's probably a good parameter for collecting Girl of Today, because I think in the first 20, there were, I think, six dolls that um, had deeper skin tones. And number 15 is one of them. I think her skin tone is probably closer to somewhere around like Josefina, maybe. I think she has the same skin tone as number two, which is now a doll that I'm on the hunt for, even though <laughs> swearing off collecting this line. So anyway, let me grab my number four and number 18 so you can see them all together. They're actually all dressed as triplets. So first up, here's my number four. Again, next to my new number 15 that I am so pumped about. Uh, this is my number four. I got her a while back for a great deal and she's so cute and one of my favorite American Girl dolls and I've just I couldn't bring myself to sell her even when I decided I was going to sell everything from the Girl of Today line there were just a couple things that I kept and she was one of them because she's just so freaking cute and I couldn't let her go all right let's take her shoes off she's wearing those Birkenstocks and finally, we have my number 18 as well. And I know some of you might come for me in the comments and tell me that this is actually a number one, but nope, this is actually a number 18. The first version of number 18 actually didn't have bangs. She basically looked exactly like Addie, but um, she just had slightly shorter hair and her hair was done differently. So it can actually be pretty difficult to tell the difference between a number one or a number 18 and Addie. But the main difference is they don't, like the number 18 doesn't have her ears pierced. But yeah, this is a genuine number 18 first edition, which is so cool. So these are all my rare American Girls of today so far. I'm hoping to add three more to my collection, but like I said, I'm really, really happy to add this beautiful number 15 to my collection because I don't think I'm gonna see one this pretty ever again in my life. I'm just gonna quickly put them on the shelf up here. I know it's gonna look totally strange because you can see them just kind of lying on their backs like randomly, but uh, I think most of you know by now, but if you're new here, I'm actually in the process of moving cross country. So we're packing everything up, which is why my background is like not the best it could be, but all of that's gonna be changing in the next couple of months. So if you don't like the way my background looks don't worry about it it's going to change soon okay awesome i was actually about to show you all the books that came with this doll as well but i remember to check the bottom of the box because a lot of times they'll have the product code on the box bottom at least in the earlier dolls so you can see here that it says gt15 which says that basically she's a girl of today number 15. so this really helps provide like further authenticity for the doll so that you know people know that i didn't grab like a number two and add an addy wig to her and give her a haircut and she just took a tumble behind me you all right? So yeah, that's really great. Even though I'm a little bit bummed that the box didn't have the original sticker on it, uh, this does, so I think we're all good. So like I said before, she came with her original shoes. I probably will put these back on her feet. And again, I think this is the rubber band that strapped her neck in to the neck brace on here. And I think we might actually have the full set of books in here. Let's have a look. 
So as many of you may know, the original girls of today were actually meant to be sort of the next step uh, after the historical dolls that Pleasant Company made. So they still kind of had the original format in a way, whereas like, you know, the historical girls came with their published stories, you know, like those famous books that we all know and love and they coordinated with the doll, but the girls of today didn't come with specific stories. They were meant to basically represent the children that were to be receiving these dolls, and they added these basically blank books in here where you could make your own book series. So you have like book one that says meet, and then you just put your doll's name in there and then like write her entire story. And of course, because this doll wasn't played with, I'm gonna assume these are all blank, but these are basically the same format as the original Pleasant Company books, like Meet Samantha, Samantha Learns a Lesson, and Samantha's Surprise, all that stuff. So these are the very, very original ones from 1995 that came with the original Girls of Today dolls. So yeah, it looks like we have all six of them in here, which is really great. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Sometimes you know how you receive just like random toys in your boxes because people don't know what's what and you'll just get something completely random that's not even a, an American Girl item. I actually thought that's what this was at first glance. I just thought it was some weird stencil, but this is actually a stencil that has, uh, you can see here, it's got the original, if I can show you, American Girl Today logo on here with the little girl doing like the jumping jacks, which is such an iconic and cool logo. So this is an official American Girl item. And I'm wondering if they put this in here so that you could go to the, like basically on the front of the books and use the stencils to make like really nice lettering on the front of the books. I bet you that's what that was. If you've seen this before and know what it is, let me know in the comments because this is so, so cool. I'm gonna put this on display. So this is my new number 15, which I have gushed about on and on this entire video. I am absolutely in love with her and she's worth every penny. Would I have liked her as much if I had had to spend $600 on her? I don't know, maybe I would have been more critical, but you know, a little over $300 for this little beauty, I think was totally worth it. I think I'm gonna have her for a long, long time, if not forever. Speaking of that, I would actually really love to continue this conversation in the comments because I talk to a lot of people in the doll community, especially on our Discord that's part of our Patreon community. I am always talking to people that say like, I know I paid way too much for this doll, but I absolutely love her and I had to have her. And you know, people are always telling me stories about, you know, this doll was only worth maybe 75 or 100 bucks, but I paid $200 for her because I just had to have her. Like, I want to know what that doll is for you. If you have a doll in your collection that you overpaid for, but you are so happy and have no regrets, Tell me who that doll is, even if it's not American Girl. I love finding out what people's favorite dolls are and just that thing that really pushes you over the edge that you just lose your mind over and you absolutely have to have because that's what this girl was for me and I wanna know who's yours is for you. <laughs> so yeah, let's keep the conversation going on in the comments. I'd love to talk to you some more. As I mentioned before, don't forget to check out my Patreon account. It's at patreon.com slash idreamofjohnny where I upload new videos every single week and it's a lot longer content typically than you find on YouTube. It's where I do unboxings of things. We talk about the doll community. You know, sometimes there's some juicy gossip. Um, I also am starting to cuss more on there because apparently y'all love it when I say cuss words. So I'm gonna let it rip this week. So we've got a lot to talk about in Doll Diaries this week. So maybe check it out. And um, you know, I think you might like it. It's only $3 a month and it goes a super long way to help support my channel so that I can continue making videos. I really, really appreciate everyone's support so far. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I would love it if you would hit the subscribe button and leave a comment and a like. All of those interactions with my videos really help my channel out because it helps my videos reach more people. And the more people I reach, the more opportunities I have to make more videos for, you know, all us crazy doll people on the internet. So I would really love it if you would uh, leave a comment below and hit the like button as well. If you want to keep hanging out with me, I have so many more videos on YouTube that I would love for you to check out. So maybe check out this one right here. Until I see you again, please take care of yourself and I will see you very soon. Bye for now.